I welcome on behalf of MIT Institute of Organic Agriculture in the class of Introductory Entomology. We are continuing with anatomy. We completed the digestive system, then excretory system, then respiratory system. Today we will discuss about, we have also completed the circulatory system blood circulation, hemolymph circulation in the insects and today we will be discussing about the reproductive system in insects. This is a bigger topic as we study male reproductive system and female reproductive system separately. So let us go ahead. We already know all living beings create a similar kind of organism, similar organisms is created by the parent organisms to keep their race alive in the ecosystem. Any species is alive in the ecosystem because of reproductive system. Their future generations are coming on a sequence basis so it is a property of living things a reproduction is one of the main property of the living things in laboratory in the dissection section how we observe the reproductive system in insects for that we have to make a cutting with the help of a scalpel at the posterior and anterior most regions. Then we place the digestive tract to the side. The reproductive system is situated below the digestive system. We remove the muscle tissues as well. The reproductive tissues then appear. Ovaries appear, lateral oviducts are there, median oviduct, seminal receptacles, and the vulva all are visible when we remove the digestive system aside and the muscles aside. Similarly, the male reproductive system also appears when we remove the digestive tract and the other muscles so that in male reproductive system we can able to see the testes The testis, the ejaculatory duct, the accessory organs, the seminal vehicles, vast differences, these are the parts of the male reproductive system. This is the comparative photograph showing the male as well as female. This is female reproductive system. This area is called ovary. And this is male reproductive system and this area it is testis. Testis are there where the sperms are manufactured. As sperms are produced, there are a sperm cells in the testis for production of a sperms. These are the oviduct and these are the seminal vesicles for carrying the sperms. And the oviduct carry the ovules. Then there is common oviduct. When the lateral oviduct meet meet each other, that oviduct is called common. Now it is single or common oviduct. Some necessary glands are there as well for helping the reproduction reproductive system. This area is called aspermathica where asperms are stored. Asperms are stored here. There are aspermathical glands as well uh, attached to the aspermathica. These glands are helpful in the physiology of reproduction. And this is the opening area is called vulva or genital chamber. In the male reproductive system, the testis is attached to the 
watts difference and the when the watts difference long tube comes here enters into a bigger sac this sac like a structure is called seminal vesicle and the both seminal there is accessory glands lateral accessory glands and when the both the seminal vehicles vessels meet meet each other they form ejaculatory duct or adigas adigas is also the synonym of ejaculatory duct so most of the insects are bisexual means male reproductive and female reproductive systems can be found on a single organisms but some times reproduction also occurs by parthenogenesis or hermaphroditism we will discuss what is parthenogenesis when the insect lay the eggs and we will discuss in the later slides the reproductive system is divided into two parts one is called internal genitalia the internal organ of the reproductive system and the external genitalia the outer organ or it is called external the internal genitalia serve for the production or development of germ cells the function of internal genitalia the internal reproductive organ is development of germ cells and the function of external genitalia is deposition of eggs and union of two sexes that is copulation the female reproductive system we will study first you can see a pair of ovaries ovaries are in one pair this one and this one these are called ovaries pair of ovaries pair of oviduct this is oviduct lateral oviduct one pair is there and you can see aspermathica where the sperm asperms are stored this is called aspermathica this is aspermathica sac like structure balloon like structure is aspermathica and this is aspermathical glands attached to the aspermathica bursa copulatrix this is copulatory organ or genital chamber it is also called vulva this is the photographs all parts are labeled easy to understand this is female reproductive organ the top area is called ligament ovarian ovarian ligament this is ovary the large sac like a structure it is called ovary and this is oviduct lateral oviduct lateral oviduct mixes and this is called common oviduct this is a spermathica where the sperms are stored and this is gland a spermathical gland this is accessory glands and this is the genital organ vulva or copulatory organ now the details ovaries are prominent visceral organ what is visceral organ visceral organs are situated in the center area of the insect and they also contain digestive systems so visceral organ they present the ovary on the either side of alimentary canal it can be in the anterior region or in the posterior region as well anteriorly the ovaries get connected with the body wall by means of thread like suspensory ligament the ovaries are covered with fat bodies and aspiracles because 
the spirochetes are all over the spirochetes not the spirochetes we can say trachea trachea and fat bodies are found on the ovaries each ovary consists of number of ovarioles or small tubules or egg tubes ovarioles are a small tubules they are enveloped by double layer cellular wall the outer wall is called ovariole ovarial sheath which has an abundant supply of trachea the eggs are discharged into the lateral oviduct what is lateral oviduct when the eggs is discharged they came to the lateral oviduct lateral oviduct proximal end of the ovarioles of each ovary join to the form lateral oviduct we can see this is ovary and the small tubules are ovarioles the end of the ovarioles found the lateral oviduct the wall of oviduct is glandular and muscular median oviduct the two lateral oviduct combine to form a median oviduct or common oviduct vagina in most of the insects median oviduct does not open directly outside it opens into a tube like a structure genital chamber or vulva or copulatory organ it is also called vulva vulva serves both purpose two purpose of vulva is there one is receiving the sperms and another is discharging the eggs in many insects the genital chamber or vulva develops a separate pouch a separate region for discharging egg and separate region for receiving the sperms so one is vulva for receiving the sperms open on seventh sternum and another is for ovipositor ovipositioning ovipor and it is on the ninth segment of the abdomen examples are lepidoptera and water beetles aspermatica we already told it is a balloon like a structure or sac like a structure which collect as sperms and they also co is connected with a spermatical gland and opens into vagina through a spermatical duct this is mainly used for storing the sperms that is aspermatica it also produces some fluid glands secrete some fluids for longevity of the sperms the sperms life increases due to the fluid secreted by a spermatical gland accessory glands a pair of accessory glands are there they are attached before the vulva and secretes the substance responsible for formation of utrica of cockroach praying mantid and poisonous secretions in case of hymenoptera these sticky substances are useful for attachment of egg to the sperm egg to the substrate on which they are laid each ovariole in insects consists of a group of units called ovarioles the number of ovarioles in ovary varies greatly in different insects usually 4 to 8 in number 4 to 8 ovarioles are present in the insects in isoptera more than 2000 ovarioles have been observed typical ovarioles or egg tube consist of three parts terminal filament the egg tube and supporting a stalk or pedicel 
different types of ovaries are there the ovaries are classified it is based on the presence or absence of nutritive cells number 1 is panoptic ovaries panoptic ovaries the nutritive cells are absent and the development of new sites takes place with the help of follicular epithelial cells examples are odonata dictio dictyoptera orthoptera ephemeroptera these insects have absence of nutritive cells so their ovaries are called panoptic ovaries number 2 is meristic ovaries these meristic ovaries contain nutritive cells which vary in their positions they contain nutritive cells these nutritive cells are also called trophocytes based on the position of trophocytes or nutritive cells meristoi meri as meristic ovaries are divided into the following categories number 1 is polytrophic ovaries they are developing oocytes and trophocytes arranged alternately within the vitellarium examples are mecoptera dermoptera socoptera number 2 is acrotrophic ovaries these type of ovaries are also called teletrophic ovaries where the trophocytes are present in the germination and are connected with trophocytes are present in the germarium germarium is found in the upper part of the body and are connected with the growing or developing oocytes by cytoplasmic strands polyoptera and polyoptera are the examples of acrotrophic ovaries now male reproductive system when we are study male reproductive system there is a pair of testis a pair of vast difference carrying the sperms then the big storage sac like seminal vesicle they collect the semen or sperms then ejaculatory duct they are the controlling mechanism to excrete the sperms genitalia is the outer opening you can see the photographs of male reproductive system the top pair is called testis this is accessory gland this is vast difference this is called as seminal vesicle vessels seminal vessels are anophostom and the common oviduct are called ejaculatory duct ejaculatory duct or copulatory organ so these are the already said these are in details mentioned here and what is the physiology in female reproductive organ the physiology is called spermatogenesis how a sperm is produced how a sperm is formed that is called spermatogenesis in the female reproductive organ it is called while vitellogenesis vitellogenesis means formation of ovum ovum formation taking place that is called vitellogenesis in the spermatogenia there the process are mitosis then meiosis again mitosis alternate order first mitosis again meiosis then mitosis in oogenesis the same process is there mitosis followed by meiosis then mitosis and under sperm formation the first step is spermatogonia 
undergo mitosis it forms primary spermatocytes this undergo meiosis they form secondary spermatocytes this again go mitosis to form spermatids and these spermatids undergo spermatogenesis and then a sperm is formed finally on the other hand in the female reproductive organ there is oogonia it goes under mitosis to form primary oocytes this again goes to meiosis to form secondary oocytes then again mitosis is repeated to form oocytes and oocytes again ovum formation is taking place from oocyte this process is called vitellogenesis so insect most of the insects are oviparous means they lay eggs most of the insects are laying eggs so they are called oviparous examples are butterfly moth flies beetles bugs locust grasshopper a big group of insects are there they are most common and so they are called oviparity viviparity means females are giving birth to the young young not the egg young ones are coming out from the females they are called viviparity such insects are called viviparous examples are aphids certain flies astylopids viviparity <coughs> is again divided into four parts one is called ovo viviparity means there is fertilized egg and they are inside the reproductive system of female and hatching of egg occur just prior to or soon after oviposition number 2 is called pseudo placental viviparity this occurs when a yolk deficient egg develop in the genital tract and the mother provides a special placenta like organ tissue through which the nutrients are transformed to the developing embryos there is no oral feeding and larva are laid upon hatching that is aphids some earwigs sorobis and pylorid polytenid bugs these are the examples of pseudo placental viviparity you can see the photographs other viviparity are hemopoilus viviparity this involves embryo developing free in the female's hemolymph when the embryo is developing in the hemolymphs with nutrient taken by osmosis this form is called hemopoilus viviparity adenotrophic viviparity this is also important and a smartest this occurs when poorly developed larva hatches and feeds early from the accessory gland this is also called milk gland this secretion within the uterus of the mother the full grown larva is deposited and pupates immediately larva is transforming into pupa sitsi flies lounge cat bat flies these are the example of adenotrophic viviparity parthenon parthenogenesis egg undergo full development without having been fertilized when there is egg development and there is no fertilization of egg that is called parthenogenesis without fertilization egg is hatching out and from the egg the new young ones can develop humans lay unfertilized egg eggs are both the haploid half and diploid double number of chromosomes these eggs undergo full development 
and give rise to males, females, and both sexes. Aphids, bees, wasps, some white flies, and thrips are example. So parthogenesis is a process of laying unfertilized eggs. Different types of parthenogenesis are already there. Facultative means not compulsory examples are V, obligatory or constant or compulsory. A stick insects, cyclic or sporadic means alteration of gamic and agamic population. Waste on the sex produced. The different classifications are Arheno Toki, Thylite Toki, Amphitoki, Sinipid West, West on meiosis, Apomictic, no meiosis occurs, then it is called Apomictic. When meiosis occurs, then it is called Automictic. Another type of reproduction that is asexual reproduction which involves the production of two or more embryo from the one egg subdivision mostly observed in parasitic insects like platygaster. Nutrition for a large number of developing embryo cannot be supplied by original egg and is required from the host hemolymph through a specialized enveloping membrane called propionium. Now polyembryonic means there are two or more embryos are producing with one egg. Examples are several parasitic bats, some cecidomites and few Stylopids. Another term is pedogenesis. What is pedogenesis? Some insects can cut short their life cycle. They do not go under adult and pupil stages. So their life cycle is very short and it is called pedogenesis. In this precious stage, Gonads develop and give birth to young ones by parthe parthenogenesis, that is reproduction by immature insects. Examples are gale midges, that is larva, miaster species, that is pupa. So, pedogenesis is the process in which there is lack of all kind of metamorphosis like pupa and adult. We lack pupa and adult in pedogenesis. Larva and pupa are there, they can produce the young ones. In some cases of CD, CCDomites, the larva gives birth to the other larva. In certain midges, the pupa produce larva, some of which become normal adult. Hermaphroditism. It is an extremely rare condition, rare phenomenon. A single individual has both male and female reproductive systems. In the scale insect, the outer cell of the gonads produce egg, while the inner cells produce a sperm. Thus, the eggs are fertilized in the gonads by a sperm in the same individual. One term is called castration. Castration is the production of mature gametes that is sealed in the organism. So, the production of mature gamete is sealed or closed in the organisms. This may occur in any insect due to any disease attack or any parasite disease attack or physiological disorder, this castration is also carried out from time to time. So now the discussion is 
we will have discussion session